Hello, and welcome to the Mancore podcast. The Mancore is a community that focuses on topics in the areas of masculinity, physical and emotional fitness, and relationships. The Mancore was created for one simple purpose, to offer a community for men seeking their deepest purpose and their greatest potential. Today, we sit down with a very special guest, Mr. Frank Schwartz, president of F3 Nation. What is F3? F3 is a national network of free, peer-led workouts for men. Their mission is clear and simple, to plant, grow, and serve small workout groups for men for the invigoration of male community leadership. I was very excited to sit down and learn more about the F3 Nation with Frank today. Their mission is very much aligned to what we do here at the Main Corps. The F3 credo is that we leave no man behind, but we leave no man where you found him. In today's conversation, we learn how this all got started, who started it, and why it started. What's fueled so much of F3's growth over the past few years? We learn more about the founders and their backgrounds, And we also learn about the great resources that men can get, not only from the workouts, but also the fellowship that's available to them at F3 Nation. We dive into the explanation of what a man's purpose is and how that is different from what a man's duties is. And also a couple of other things about what the future holds for F3, the definition of a great man, and all sorts of other really, really fun stuff. So please help me welcome Frank Schwartz. Frank, welcome to the Mancore Podcast. Hey, thanks so much for having me on, man. Yeah, well, I really appreciate your time. I know you're, you're a very busy man, uh, so I, I really am grateful that uh, you're going to take some time today to share a little bit about F3 and your message. I wondered if you could spend a few minutes at the top just kind of introducing yourself and uh, letting us know a little bit about who you are. Sure. Uh, So, uh, as you mentioned, my name is Frank. Um, uh, I'm a dad uh, of three uh, wonderful young ladies, um, all redheaded, uh, which goes way back somewhere in our history. I don't know exactly who all had the red hair, but uh, we get asked a lot. I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I've been married for going on 19 years um, to a wonderful woman uh, named Tracy. And um, I, uh, about, I guess, for the last, uh, call it 12, 13 years, I've been doing, um, I've owned my own uh, corporate communications company. Um, and uh, now I'm looking to kind of transition into more leadership development and things along those lines because I realized, you know, uh, all this corp- corporate communication work that we've been doing is great, but the real problem isn't whether or not, you know, they're communicating or even what's getting communicated. Uh, the real problem was, was in the leadership. So, um, trying to, you know, work on, uh, what I would consider to be the right end of the problem from here going forward. But, um, other than that, I, uh, well, and we're, I know we're going to get, a, into F3 a whole bunch here in a second, but. Um, I, uh, I, I was asked to step in at the beginning of this year as the president of F3 Nation, um, which, uh, again, we'll, we'll get to kind of exactly what that is. But uh, and then other than that, I just try and, uh, you know, help where I can, be a blessing where I can, you know, and, uh, and, and lift men up wherever I go. So I guess that's kind of the, the 30-second-ish uh, version. Yeah, I love that. And, I mean, obviously your plate is, your, your plate is full, um, but, you know, there's a – there's a real commitment and a real passion that you have for leadership, which uh, is a huge component and, and maybe the main component of F3 and, and also, uh, you know, uplifting other men. So uh, credit to you for, uh, for your efforts there. So diving in, uh, for those who aren't familiar with, with F3, can you tell us a little bit about what it is? Sure. The, the, th- the place to start, I guess, is, you know, what does that even stand for? 
Um, because there's a lot of different, you know, you'll hear, oh, it's an exercise group. And there's other things. There's F45 and there's, you know, CrossFit. There's, there's all kinds of things. And, and more and more of them have more and more weird acronyms and, and <laughs> you know, initials and whatever else we've got going on. But um, so for us, uh, F3 stands for fitness, fellowship, and faith. Those are the, those are the three Fs. And it started uh, nine years ago, just over nine years ago now. Uh, here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and it started really um, as a, just a, a way for some guys to get a, a good workout in, um, and then it sort of blossomed from there. Um, the guys who started, uh, Dave Redding is a, an attorney in town, he's a commercial litigator, a very, very talented commercial litigator, um, and uh, Tim Whitmire, um, who was, uh, I guess he's he was working at, at the time, I think, as an AP reporter. Um, but uh, has done a lot of different business development consulting and, and different things. I'm um, actually has launched his own uh, consultancy um, for uh, small businesses as well. But um, he, uh, those, those two guys were going through a workout here in, uh, here in Charlotte. Uh, it was outdoor. Um, I, my understanding is it was free. Um, and as it continued to grow, you know, Dave and Tim were like, man, this is, it's getting bigger. And, you know, we were wondering, like, would you let us start another one of these, you know, across town? And the guy was like, nah, you know, I like our, our group as it is. I don't want to do anything else. And so they were like, well, we've got to do something because, uh, A, the workout's great. And B, they just started noticing that, you know, you get to this point in life where, you know, let's say you're 40 ish, you know, early 40s, and all of your high school friends have kind of moved on to other things. You haven't seen those guys in, you know, 20 plus years. You know, you may have a couple college friends still lingering on. Uh, you, you see some guys on Facebook or whatever it is, but you really, you, you get to this point where you kind of look around and go, I don't, I don't really have a whole lot of friends. Um, you know, like good, close male relationships, and uh, and so they started seeing that as they were working out with these guys, these develop, you know, these relationships were starting to develop, and so they said, you know, we need to make this a little more formal and and um, you know, see what we can do with it. And, and uh, candidly, I don't think either one of them had any. Uh, inclination at all uh, that it could turn into anything other than you know just some guys in Charlotte working out every once in a while but they expected on day one ah, you know maybe three or four guys will show up we'll work out we'll get a good workout in maybe if we can grow this thing to you know 10 or 15 20 guys or something uh, you know that'll be great and then you know maybe it grows a little bit past that we can start another group or you know whatever day one like 40 guys showed up and instantly they knew that you know, <laughs> there was something to this, right? Yeah. Um, and then from there, it just it, it continued to blossom. Um, Dave uh, sort of discovered for himself that his his reason for being on the planet is uh, to invigorate male community leadership. The the thing that bugged him the most about life, uh, as he looked around, was he got sick and tired of seeing men stand with their hands in their pockets, you know, at church and other places, going, "Man, somebody ought to do something about all this trouble we're having." in the community, you know, we're oh gosh, you know, somebody ought to do something about this or something about that. Right. And, and he noticed that, you know, these guys would go to their jobs. We're in Charlotte and it's a, a huge banking center. Um, there's all kinds of giant national banks here. And these guys would, uh, you know, go to their 15th floor cubicle and, uh, they would show up at eight o'clock and they'd get through the day and they'd, all, the, all of them would flood out at five o'clock and head back home. And then they would sit on the couch, you know, <laughs> watch the game or watch some TV or something, maybe deal with their kids, maybe not, you know, kind of just slumping through life. Um, and I know that we'll talk again a little bit about uh, what, what they eventually came to term sad clown syndrome. Um, but uh, everybody looks happy on the outside, but inside they're, uh, you know, they're sad, they're dying. And so that's what F3 eventually became is a place for men to wake back up and uh, to, to plug back into their lives and find purpose again. Um, it just so happens that it, we've, I, and Dave would say it was, it was accidental, uh, but we discovered that uh, getting your body fit is the place to start. And so that's why the, the workout is there, that the first F is fitness, because as a man uh, gets his body right and his physical fitness in order, he starts to look and go, Hey, I feel pretty good. And then he starts focus, being able to focus on that fellowship piece, right? So the, the fitness is the, the magnet. That's the thing that draws guys in because nobody can really turn down a free workout if you get right down to it. Right. Sure. 
And this thing happened to happened to start on January one, uh, and so you know, of uh, 2011, they looked back and they went, you know, uh, this is when everybody thinks they're going to go to the gym anyway, right? So we may as well get them to come in and work out. So that the magnet got them out there, and then the glue that sticks them out there is that fellowship piece, you know, that friendship piece, like we were talking about. And eventually, what what happened over time is Dave noticed that these guys would start getting together, and they were like, hey, uh, Dave, what if we uh, what if we all went and built a habitat house together? Or what if we went and mowed some, you know, some guy got sick. And, oh gosh. What if we went and mowed John's lawn? You know, uh, that kind of thing. And he was like, why would I care? And that, that eventually became what we call the faith piece. That's the dynamite. Um, so, you know, you got the, the magnet, the glue and the dynamite and the dynamite is that you then are unlocked and you start to look at something bigger than yourself. And that's how F3 defines faith. We don't adhere to any particular faith tradition or religion or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. We really just look at it and say, you must believe that you are not the king of the world. You must believe that, that there is something bigger than yourself out there. Uh, and you've got to submit yourself to that, whatever that is. And so for a lot of us, as it you know, starts in the South, you know, many of the men are, are Christians. Uh, and so they have a belief in God and that sort of thing. Uh, some guys in the Pacific Northwest, you know, that they're not as tuned into that sort of thing or uh, even up in the, the Northeast, you know, there's, there's less of that sort of thing. But that all the men who come, look and admit and we have plenty of men who are Muslims or, or Buddhists or whatever it might be, um, some Jewish guys as well, you know, but the, the admission to themselves that there is something bigger, there is a higher power, whether you call it God or whether you are a Bob Dylan spiritualist, as, as Dave Redding would say, and uh, you believe the answer is blowing in the wind. You know, we don't really care. Uh, we just think you ought to be the best one of whatever it is you think you are uh, that you can be. So that's that's sort of the, I guess, the, the longer uh, explanation of what F3 is uh, in its, uh, you know, at, at its core. Wow. It's so common to see, you know, your fellow man just kind of drifting. You know, he's just, like you yeah. said, going to the eight to five, you know, he doesn't, doesn't really have a purpose or a mission or he's not really focused on that. You can tell just by the energy that he puts out or, or just kind of looking at him, making eye contact with yeah. him. You can, you can just tell that dead sort of empty look behind the smile, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. Uh, when, when they tap into purpose, suddenly there's this vibrance, there's this energy and, 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 you know, it seems like fellowship really ignites that because they're working for something outside of their own experience and, and for a greater, greater cause, greater purpose. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So F3 has grown, has a, t it's got a, had a ton of growth. I mean, you guys have, you know, really yeah. grown over the past couple of years. I mean, it's grown to more than 30 States, over 2000 scheduled workouts per week. Um, you know, what are the reasons that men are showing up? Uh, well, uh, you know, our belief is every man shows up for his own reasons, right? So I'm, I wouldn't guess why a particular man showed up or what it is in his life that has led him to that point where, he feels like, you know, this is what he needs at this time. But as a general rule, excuse me, that magnet really is exactly that. So they come thinking, you know, I'm here to get fit. I'm here to, you know, lose this 30 pounds that I've been gaining and losing over the last, you know, 15 years of my life. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, and cause you know, every year I, I, did, I resolved to eat well and I resolved <laughs> to go to the gym. And then somewhere around, you know, January 21st, uh, all that's done. You know, we're, <laughs> I'm back to, you know, banging Twinkies, you know, two-fisted, and, and uh, I forget where the gym is, right? Yep. So, you know, I, I lose 15 pounds, I gain 15, then I lose 20, and I gain 35, and then I lose, you know, all that kind of stuff. We, we, we refer to it as the Pogo 40, right? That you have this, this weight that you start uh, putting on. So everybody initially, I think, comes out because – they want to get a good workout. They know that they need to eat healthier. They know they need to live healthier. Or as it was in my case, my doctor finally said, hey, fat guy, uh, you're going to be put on all this medicine for your blood pressure and your cholesterol. Um, you know, we're going to put you on a, a, you know, one of those machines, what they call them, a CPAP machine for your sleep apnea that you're developing and all this kind of stuff. And she was like, so this is the last visit that I'm going to let you come here. You know, it's for my annual physical. So last visit, I'm going to let you come here uh, and not leave with all that stuff because you're dangerously high on all these things. And so I finally said, all right, fine. You know, I'll, <laughs> I'll go and run around a little bit. Uh, and I had heard about F3. I'd started going to the gym, uh, but I kept hearing about F3, kept hearing about F3. And finally, 
you know, just went out there to try it. So I think that's the reason that men show up initially is they, they come to get fit um, because they know that that's the thing that they need to do. Now, why do they keep showing up, you know, week after week after week? Uh, you know, that's, that's part of that second half, right? Mm-hmm. Because once I, once I develop a relationship with other men and I'm looking around and, and we're all accelerating, you know, toward fitness in our physical lives, you can't help it. Uh, it just spills out. Um, you want other men to do well. And so I show up now a lot of times because, you know, I got half a dozen guys texting me the night before going, Hey man, where are you going to be in the morning? Yep. You know, Hey man, where, <laughs> you know, that kind of accountability, thing. right? I want to sleep in, Yep. you know, I can do it now <laughs> if I wanted to, right? <laughs> yep. I have, I have a group of guys that I have to tell them, you know, Hey, I'm resting tomorrow just so you know, so don't bug me. Um, you know, because that's just sort of how it works because we all recognize any of us are only ever a couple of bad decisions away from going right back where we were or worse. Mm -hmm. And so having that fellowship, I think is what really keeps guys coming back. And then, you know, again, not to, to overstate it or, or repeat it too often, but as soon as your brain becomes unlocked and your heart becomes unlocked and you begin to look at the welfare of another man and you start to see that your life is better for what's been given to you. And now it's incumbent upon you to give that to another man. As soon as you start seeing those things in your life, you can't help yourself. You got to keep coming back. I mean, it, it, it's it's a natural outgrowth of what, um, you know, of, of what's happening in your own heart and in your own mind. So yeah, very cool. And you know, there's like we talked about before, there's too many of them that are disconnected. Um, and so you know, obviously the growth shows that it's not only what men want, but it's what men what what we need, right? So um, incredible work that you guys are doing. You know that. I did a, an episode on, on the mental health for men. It was like my second podcast here. And mm. uh, I honestly think that, you know, mental health can take a lot from the group efforts because we don't work, men work best when we're, you know, shoulder to shoulder, when we're, you know, whether it's on the battlefield, if we're on the same team, um, you know, we just, we just do better when we're shoulder to shoulder, not face to face going real deep. Uh, so I think that, you know, mental health professionals can also take a look at really the group efforts as a way of, um, you know, helping men through through their whatever they're dealing with as well. So it seems like you guys are already doing know, that on sure. a number of number of ways. So, yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, it's the, you know, kind of that the, the idea, uh, obviously, you know, we and we try and figure out ways to even, um, you know, to sort of, uh, I guess, enhance that or, or you know, dive in shoulder to shoulder even further um, with some of the idiot things that we do. We call them completely stupid and utterly pointless uh, workouts, <laughs> seats off workouts. Um, and, uh, you know, because there's something about that shared suffering that, that brings men together mm -hmm. uh, as well. And so you're right. Uh, the community aspect of this is, has uh, look, and I don't, I don't want to sound dramatic and I don't want to overstate it in any way. But the facts are the facts, and that is that, you know, I've heard personally firsthand reports of guys who say, you know, if I had not found this, I don't know if I would have made it. You know, I was descending down this spiral of alcohol, you know, and whatever it was, and I thought to myself, you know what, maybe I'm just going to pop a bunch of pills and drink a bunch of alcohol, and, uh, and then I just won't get up tomorrow, period. And, you know, somehow they had a couple buddies that drug them out to a workout, and, you know, that that community aspect of it is, you know, being shoulder to shoulder, like you said, um, has <laughs> dramatically, uh, helped their mental health. Um, yeah. and I think that's true of all of us, what, you know, depending on how deep we are in that hole, right. But all of us have that, you know, that, that pit inside somewhere and this, this helps fill it up for sure. Awesome. So you guys got a, you know, a good age range too. You know, I, I read that, uh, you know, four five and six, all the way up to 80. Uh, that's, that's an incredibly <laughs> wide age group. Um, yeah. I, I want to get your opinion on, on the significance of bringing that wide age range, you know, somebody four five and six, you know, why it's so great for them to be around, you know, men that are that much older, the significance of that. Sure. Um, I would say it's not common everywhere, uh, in all of our areas to have, you know, guys that are, you know, kids that come, uh, at the same time as the older men. Uh, five o'clock in the morning is, you know, is tough for kids that age. Uh, they got school and things like that. But at the same time, you know, they're, they're somewhere along the way, 
some guys in F3 were like, you know what we ought to have is we ought to have workouts where the kids come. And so, you know, on a Saturday, it might be, I mean, there are some places where all summer long, you know, the guys will go to their regular workouts and then their kids will show up for the workout after the workout, you know, and, and the, the really young guys come. I've seen guys, you know, uh, bring their, their younger sons, you know, 9, 10, 11 years old. Uh, and what's really inspiring is when you get those 9, 10, 11 year old kids leading the workout. Awesome. You know, with, <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, calling cadence and telling these old men what to do uh, and how to do it. And I mean, what a valuable and, and legacy leaving uh, kind of activity that is. And yeah, guys all the way up to 80 do come. Uh, maybe they don't do as many pull-ups as they would have done if they were 40, uh, you know, or whatever it might be, but they, they come. And I think it really just speaks to the fact that, uh, you know, there ain't nothing different than any of us, brother. Yep. You know, yep. I mean, whether you're 20 or whether you're 50 or whether you're 60, that, that deep, uh, need inside all of us to build this community of, of masculinity of men uh, to be around one another and but in a positive way mm-hmm. uh, not in the you know sort of the, the sort of stereotypical gym bro kind of you know chest beating testosterone fueled kind of a way but in a in a very legitimate desire to improve themselves and improve the community around them um, and I think that's what really is is the biggest difference and that that speaks to men of, of any age uh, of any creed of any color of of anything. Yeah. You guys offer, you know, obviously the, the physical side, getting in better shape, but this is getting outside of your own, of your own desires, your own wants this by getting involved in the community, by lifting up other people, you're getting outside of your own two shoes. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, in the, in the egotistical world that, that we're finding ourselves in, that's, that's so huge. So, uh, I, I read that the founders are, they have a military background and you mentioned that at the top. So can you, does that inspire the workouts or the types of workouts? Can you kind of talk about, you know, what types of workouts they are? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first of all, there's only five core principles that we function upon, right? And none of them say you must work out this way or do this kind of workout. There's no like, you know, like in CrossFit, they have, you know, prescribed work at, you know, wads or whatever that they'll say, these are the ones you'll do, you know, or whatever. You've got a trainer there, an instructor, making sure you do it correctly and all those kinds of things. It's nothing like that. Most of these guys make this stuff up um, uh, as they go. And, and we've created quite a, an extensive lexicon of workout, uh, you know, uh, exercises that, that guys can look at and, you know, refer to and, and incorporate as part of the, the workouts that they design. Uh, Dave, now Tim not, was not, but Dave was a, a special forces, uh, army, uh, you know, green beret. And so certainly some of the workout part is inspired by that. We do typically count cadence much like you would in, uh, you know, a PT in the morning at boot camp, right? These are definitely boot camp style, body weight style, um, you know, calisthenic inspired workouts, uh, for the most part. Now, one of the, the principles, you know, that we kind of, believe in, uh, in F3 is that every man is free to lead, right? So some guys have gone so far as to say, you know what? I think I like kettlebells. I like working out with kettlebells. I'm going to start a kettlebell workout. And you know, there you go. So all those guys only work out with kettlebells and they don't necessarily do some of the other stuff on those days. Right. Um, some guys are like, you know what? I really like, uh, riding bikes and that's the way I, I like to, you know, get fit. So there's, there's workouts where it's just riding bikes. Um, there's workouts where it's, you know, it's all running. There's workouts, you know, of all kinds that, that come through, but on the whole, I would say, you know, if you were to show up in any given state in any given, uh, you know, city where there's F3, it's going to look pretty similar. Uh, and it definitely is inspired. Um, the workout is inspired certainly by, uh, you know, by some of that military background that Dave has. Um, and even more so than that, the leadership principles that we would teach, uh, along with the workouts. Um, are certainly inspired by uh, the successful principles of military leadership, right? And and that's really just because those principles are, <laughs> you know, they're timeless. This is it's a very, uh, you know, going going all the way back to stoicism, you know, thousands of years ago. You know, these these types of leadership principles have been taught and and been successful, and so these are time tested uh, kinds of things that that have uh, you know grown through uh, years and years and years. But um, but yeah, that's. That's, I would say, so you get a little bit of variance, you know, across uh, places and, you know, might even be within the same general area. You might have, you know, kettlebells and, 
you know, boot camps on the same day and just in different locations, like where I live in, in, uh, you know, just outside of Charlotte, you, you get that kind of thing. But, um, but all of the, all of the workouts, all of that three, the, the main thing that you have to focus on, and really the only, the only thing we were kind of require, uh, we don't like the word rules. We're not really fans of that sort of, <laughs> sort of thing, but, uh, we do have core principles. Uh, and those five core principles are that a, uh, number one, it's free. It's always free, no matter what. Um, there, there'll never be a time when uh, a person is charged uh, any amount of money to participate in an F3 workout. It just won't happen. Uh, number two is that it's uh, open to all men. And when we say open to all men, I mean, you, you, we just kind of touched on it. We mean exactly that, right? We don't care if you're four years old or 84 years old. Um, it, it doesn't mean anything to us. We don't care if you're black, white, brown, pink. We don't care. Uh, gay, straight, Muslim, Jew, Mormon, it, it, it doesn't matter to us. Um, all we ask is that you be there and, you know, that you conduct yourself like a man when you get there, right? We don't really care, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? Number three is that uh, these workouts are held outdoors, rain or shine, heat or cold. Uh, we have guys that work out in Florida, um, and we hate those guys because they're working out in 70 degrees sunny weather all the time. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> right? but then there's guys in Minnesota who are working out in two feet of snow, right, you know, as of this morning, and, and they just do it. Um, because it, uh, it's part of what toughens you up, uh, uh -huh. mentally and physically, you know, to make it outdoors. There's some, there's a, there's a very raw element to that, that, that is very, very beneficial, we believe to, to the developing of men and, and their leadership. Uh, number four is that it is peer led. You know, there are no professionals here. No one in F3 is, is collecting a salary of any kind. Um, all these things are, are basically volunteer, you know, positions locally and nationally. Um, and that's because the workout's free, you know? Uh, so we don't have instructors. We have men who participate in the workout. Uh, and then the leadership of that workout rotates, you know, uh, time by time. So, you know, tomorrow, uh, it's going to be, you know, John down the street, uh, on Saturday, you know, I'm leading a, a different one and, and I will get another chance to, to lead again later. And so that's, it, it always kind of rotates through, right? So the more you show up, the more likely it is that you're going to be asked to lead at some point. And then the fifth uh, core principle is that every F3 workout ends in a circle of trust. And for us, the circle of trust basically just means an, uh, an opportunity to kind of uh, to circle up with the, the guys that you're there with and acknowledge that something's bigger than you, right, to share your heart. Um, we've heard everything in circles of trust from, you know, I've got cancer uh, to my mom's got cancer to my kid committed suicide to I mean, you name it. Um, these are the kinds of things that men are sharing at the end of the end of the workouts. Uh, and when they open their hearts like that, men jump in and wonderful friendships and wonderful support groups have been formed um, as a result of that uh, because these men are coming together and being willing to share their heart in that way. Uh, and so you've got, you know, th those are kind of the five core things. And as long as you're doing those things, you know, you're F3, man. Uh, we, we're all in. It's incredible that you guys are giving men a place to, to not only giving them an opportunity to lead because it sounds like it's it's something that rotates through the group and you're giving men an opportunity to, to stand up and and um, take lead. I also love that you're giving them a safe place where they can't be condemned for the stuff that they're going through because that's that stuff gets repressed for years and years and years. And those dogs got to get out somehow, and they do, but yeah. just not always in the best way, right? Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, it's fun. my kids say it all the time, and I, I was a pretty good dad. I thought, you know, I went to church and you know did all the things I was supposed to do. But since going to you know starting to do F three about just a little over five years ago, my my girls all have have commented multiple times in in multiple ways uh, across those years how much better of a dad I've become and how much less angry I am about different things and how I don't blow up and, you know, get upset with them uh, over dumb stuff anymore. You know, I mean, it's just the outlet of, of the physicality is wonderful, but also having the men that you can rely on and, and lean on to say, you know, I, I, I just don't know what I'm doing here. And, and, I, <laughs> and I'm tired of screwing this up. Anybody got any ideas, you know, yeah, and uh, it makes a huge, huge difference. Yeah. Well, credit to you, man. That's, that's an incredible story oh, just in your own transformation. Yeah. Uh, sure. And, and that's wonderful. But I, and I mean this very sincerely when I say it, I don't, I don't feel like I've done much. Um, it's, it's just been a natural outgrowth of the men that, that are in this group that, you know, as you surround yourself with better men, 
you get better. Can't help it. Yep. Um, so, so each each member receives a, a nickname, and um, <laughs> I, I I have to ask you about that because I know in exchanging some emails with you that yours is Dark Helmet. So, wh- what can you tell us about that? Uh, we believe you know it's a we're a little bit tribal that way. Right? Love that and, by uh, the way. We want you to we want you to feel like you're part of the group, man. Um, the way that uh, Dave often says it as we go around and name guys at the end of a workout if they're new, he says, look, you know, uh, and that's part of the circle of trust actually as well as you, you say your hospital name, uh, which is the name your mama gave you before she knew what you were going to be. That's what Dave always says. <laughs> uh, and then he, and you say your age typically because, you know, it's interesting to know that a 57-year-old guy just ran you down like, <laughs> like he wasn't trying, right? That's fun. Um, and, uh, and then you say your F3 name, and, and that F3 name is that, that idiot nickname that we give you. Um, and guys, you know, the, the origin of it and how you give a good nickname, that's a uh, you know, subject for another time. But uh, mine is Dark Helmet. Um, that's because, uh, and, and I don't know how old you are, Aaron, but um, if you're familiar at all with the, the Mel Brooks movie Spaceballs. I'm not. Uh, okay. It's a, it's a Star Wars parody, and... Um, you know, they, they have, instead of the force, they have the Schwartz. My last name is Schwartz. Uh, and so the, the main bad guy in that movie is a spoof of Dark Helmet, or I mean, is a spoof of uh, Darth Vader, and his name is Dark Helmet. And so that's, they named me after this, you know, this parody of Darth Vader, uh, because my last name is Schwartz, uh, which was the, you know, instead of the force, it's the Schwartz in Spaceballs, so... They, they were feeling pretty creative that morning, apparently. <laughs> no, I think it's, I think it's great. And yeah. when you said tribal, that's all I need to hear. Cause, um, that community tribe, you know, that's what this is about. And that's what exactly. the main core is about. Yep. So yeah. Awesome. So it's, it, we've talked, touched on this a little bit. It, it's called F3 fitness fellowship and faith. Can you, you know, explain a little bit more about the faith piece so that men are very clear about, you know, what the faith portion is and they're not, you know, turned off by it or intimidated by it. It's a really good point. And, and we have a number of guys who, you know, a, they hear the word faith and instantly they think, Oh good. You know, they're going to bring out Bibles at the end or something. And and that's just not the case. Um, It really is. And, and, you know, kind of like we alluded to a little bit before, but it really is a dedication to the idea that just that there's something bigger than you that you are not the king of the world. Because if you think you're the king of the world, you can't affect anybody's life in a positive way because you're going to serve yourself. And we, we believe very much in, in uh, you know, C.S. Lewis kind of referred to it as, as a death of self. Um, you, have to, you have to do what we call live third, right? And so you have at the top of that, that uh, totem pole is your creator, whatever, you know, again, whatever you kind of believe that to be. Uh, underneath that is everybody else, <laughs> Right. And then and then comes you, your third. You're always third. Uh, and so that's really kind of what that faith piece is. Uh, we've had guys that have come that are, are very strict atheists. And initially they would get super uncomfortable at the end, you know, because, again, we're in the South. And so prayer is often a, a piece of that that circle of trust at the end. Um, and so, you know, they get a little uncomfortable. And uh, but then as they realize that there was no judgment there, uh, you know, sometimes it looks like a shout out uh, to you know, the community, a shout out to the guys that are there or whatever it might be. Um, sometimes guys just share sort of a, a, a word of wisdom, you know, a, a little, a, you know, a nugget of truth or something, a, a quote or something that they feel. Um, the point is really just to open your heart uh, to acknowledge the, the greater good uh, and the greater community around you and, and to you know, be willing to say, hey, I'm going to live third um, to that and, and put everybody else before myself. And that's, that's really the the faith piece um, because it, it is not, and I, I, I almost feel like we can't overstate it, right? Um, it is not religion. There is no religion that we subscribe to at all in F3. Sure. It, it, with that quote that you said that live third, where did that come from again? Uh, Dave Redding, strange uh, noodle, you know, his, <laughs> the, the snakes that swirl around in that dude's head. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Although, I mean, again, that's a, it's a fairly, you know, if you start looking uh, across you know, all the different uh, belief systems, faith traditions, whatever they might be, that's, that's a pretty common, um, you know, again, even dating back to Stoicism and, sure. and you know, Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius and those guys, right? That, that's a pretty common idea uh, that's, that's, you know, that comes up a fair amount. 
right? Is this idea of, of putting all others before self. So, do you read a lot of Stoicism? I just I got into it for the first time last year. Do, do you? Are you same? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, same. I you know I'm not I'm not going to try and pretend like I'm some kind of expert, but I don't remember where I heard uh, Ryan Holiday on some you know some podcast or other or something if you're familiar with him. But sure. Uh, then I started, you know, just reading some of his books and, and looking into it and then started reading some of the, I guess what I would call source material, you know, of the, the ancient Stoics. And, um, much of what, uh, they teach and talk about really, in my mind, jives pretty, pretty closely with F3 and, and, uh, with my own personal faith system and, um, just makes you a better person. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that we subscribe to that in F3 as, you know, the way to do it or something, but it certainly, there, there, the, uh, there's enough overlap that, yeah, that I, I pretty much dig it. Yeah. He, Ryan does a great job, uh, at taking those passages from so many thousands of years ago and making it relatable to the common man, the the eight to five, right. and those principles are yeah. timeless. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's exactly what. You know, it's, it's funny that there just seems to be this, I guess these are ideas that the time has come again to, you know, that they need to be in the forefront. And that's why F3 has grown the way that it has, you know, is, is these are things that Dave believes that he has put out there, you know, to the world. And that a lot of us, many thousands of us have looked at and said, man, yes, absolutely. That's, that is how I feel. That's who I want to be. That's how I want to live my life. Uh, and I recognize that that is the most effective way to live my life. Um, you know, is, is leading in the, in this way. And so that's, I think that's part of why, you know, we've seen the growth that we have and, and why it continues to, to resonate with men, you know, the more we share it. So there, there's a book that is, uh, from the co-founders. Uh, is that, can you tell us a little bit about the book? Is it something that men should read before or, or after attending F3 workouts? Can you tell us a little bit about the book? Sure. Uh, I would say that it's kind of like a, an F3 primer, if you will. It gives a little bit of the history of kind of how it came to be. Um, some of the things that we uh, hold as, as core principles and as truths that, that would, you know, help uh, along the way. There's some, you know, some of that wisdom and, and, you know, stoic wisdom and truth that's kind of sprinkled in there. Um, it's a, uh, it's a great read. I mean, it's a great read. It's really, you know, a little bit about Dave's story and Tim's story of how, you know, they were, um, you know, they were those guys, those sad clown guys and how they kind of overcame that and how F3 sort of, as it continued to grow and blossom and turn into what it is now, you know, from just being a, a few guys working out to, you know, this nationwide, you know, <laughs> just crazy how, it, how it's happened. But um, so it's a little bit of that kind of a story. Uh, and you asked, I guess, should they read before they show up to work out? Sure. Um, should they show up after, you know, read it after they show up to work out? Sure. Um, so, they, yeah. you know, uh, there's plenty of guys who don't even know that there is a Dave Redding or that there's a book and they show up to F3 workouts. And then there's some of us, you know, weirdos who, um, you know, sort of <laughs> have, have uh, really uh, taken a bath in the Kool-Aid. Right. And uh, and pretty familiar with all that. But um, so it doesn't matter. Does it does it will it change your experience with F3? I think it will. Um, but if all you want to do is come work out, man, we don't care. You don't have to read the book. And what's the name of the, the book? Oh, uh, that's, uh, it's called freed to lead. Um, and, uh, and, and that's, you know, uh, we also, Dave has also written another book called Q source, um, that, uh, we hold as kind of the, the F3 manual of leadership, uh, to, you know, to lead with virtue. So, um, that's another book that is out there. Um, it's a little bit deeper dive. I would say that's, that's one after you've, come a few times and start to kind of get this idea of the weird jargon and lingo and stuff that we have and a little bit more familiar with F3 is probably the time to pick that up. But, um, but yeah, so yeah, free to lead. That's a, that's a good one. I would say definitely it's on Amazon. Um, and I could definitely get a copy of that. So. Awesome. So it, it seems like men are coming away with more than just a workout, which we've been talking about. This is about developing strong relationships, developing a brotherhood. Um, and you've, you mentioned a few times the cure for the sad clown syndrome. What does that mean exactly? <laughs> yeah. So, um, that's, th that, uh, that idea of sad clown syndrome is, is sort of the, uh, existential disease, I guess, that 
Dave and, uh, and, and Tim noticed that, that these guys have, you know, the, the idea that everything looks great. You know, they drive a nice car, they live in a nice house, they've got a great job, you know, money shows up every two weeks. And they think that their purpose is to continue that lifestyle somehow, that men have adopted that as their purpose. Um, and that is the only purpose that they have is to just sort of be an ATM for uh, the people in their life. Right. And we find that that means leaves a man sort of hollow um, and uh, and yearning inside and, and not sad in the sense that they cry every day, but just sort of um, lost, I guess, would be the, the best way to describe it. Uh, and so these guys, you know, would pile into the, the towers uptown Charlotte and then pile out at the end of the day, just like we were talking about. Um, and what F3 does is, is it, it has gone about disrupting a man's status quo. You know, it, it gets in your brain and says, do you, do you really think that this is what you were created for? Do you really believe that this is the problem that you were born to serve in life that you were, that you were born to solve? You know, it, it, do you think that this is what it is? And, you know, some guys might say, yeah, no, this is it. This is all I want. And that's fine. You know, we don't ever judge a man for that. Um, but at the same time, uh, most of us look at our lives, especially when you get to that age, that sort of, you know, early forties and you've gotten a couple promotions and, you know, that's, that's when guys start to tip off the deep end and they go, is this it? Is this mm -hmm. all there is? Mm -hmm. You know, is this, is this what I wake up every day for? And unfortunately some of them, uh, you know, decide it's not. And so as they go about searching for the thing that they think is going to rejuvenate their lives, they end up cheating on their wives, end up buying sports cars, getting tattoos, putting earrings in their ears. I mean, you know, it's the cliche, right? Of the, the classic midlife crisis idiot. Um, you know, that runs out and tries to change his life and shortcut the process in some way rather than work through the difficult things that are happening in his heart and mind. And uh, F3 is the, for me anyway, um, has been the foundation to kind of keep me from, you know, going off in the weeds somewhere, right? Being connected to these guys. So, yeah, I'm a Sopranos fan, so the sad clown syndrome didn't get past uh, me. Yeah. I knew exactly where that came yeah. from. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, Tony's in the, in the uh, his psychiatrist office, and and, and uh, that's the reference there. So yeah, yeah, incredible. So uh, you know, I hear a lot about finding your purpose. I know you do. It's a topic that I feel like, especially in the last five years, gets tossed around a lot. I want to get your, you know, what you what you think a man's purpose is and why it's so important um, for our health and and just our our general well being. Um, one of the ways that Dave, uh, has said it to me uh, in the past is, and I'm sure he said it to many other men this way, but he says, once you've found your purpose, you know, once you've kind of discovered why you're here, no matter where you go, you know, why you're there. There's never any question of like, you know, why am I ugh, I'm wasting my time doing this? Or uh, why am I spending time doing that? You know, you're not just dragging yourself to these parties that you you know, your wife wants to go to or something because, you know, you think, oh, well, I guess I have to just show my face. No, you have a purpose now. You know why you're there. You don't have to feel bad about that. If you're there to, you know, whatever your purpose is, you can live that out in every aspect of your life. If you have a job and you look at your job and you go, oh, uh, I'm just so tired. I don't want to go in today or I just don't want to deal with all those stupid, whatever. If you know your purpose in life, if you know why you're here and what it is you are to do, you, you can live out that purpose even in that terrible, you know, job that you, you think you have, right? Uh, and so it's so important. I think it's probably one of the most paramount challenges of a man's life is to discover uh, what his personal purpose is. The way you asked the question I thought was interesting. You said, what is a man's purpose? Um, and, and I don't know that I have an answer that, that would blanket and cover every man. I think every man has a purpose, but I don't know what a man's purpose is. You know, um, I think every man has his own purpose and he will have to discover that. Now, he has – I think we have a generic-ish uh, set of duties that are common to most men, right? To protect our families, to serve them, and to provide for them, and those kinds of things, right? I, I agree that there's a, a certain set of common duties uh, across men, but the purpose, the true purpose behind why we do the things that we do, I think is uh, mostly individual to every man. Um, and that's something that 
um, is discoverable. Uh, and really, I would say, and I didn't believe this when Dave told me this the first time or even maybe the first few times. It's probably something you already kind of know in your heart what it is. And you're just too afraid to get out of your own way and let it happen. Um, at least that was the case for me. Well said, brother. I love that you made it clear the difference between purpose and duties. Um, but I, I think that's a, a perfect explanation for for both of those things. So thank you for, for that explanation. I'm sure I stole it from someone much smarter than me. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it means you're paying attention, so that's all good. Oh, okay, okay, all right. I'll take credit for that then. Sure, yeah. So you, you're also affiliated to FIA, which is Females in Action. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we, FIA, yep. Okay. Is it similar So, or is it different than F3? What, what can women expect from attending FIA? No, that's a, that's a great question. And being very candid even, uh, and you, you, you indicated you may ask me this uh, before, we, uh, you know, before we met today here, but uh, if I'm being real candid, uh, I don't really know. Sure. Uh, I'm not in it. My wife's not in it. I'm not really sure. I, I see um, groups popping up and I see growth in certain places. I, I don't know uh, that they have exactly the same kind of mission uh, that we do. They, they function on many of the same core principles. I think FIA kind of uh, evolved out of the fact that all the husbands were getting together and working out and the wives were all like, hey, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you idiots are all going to be together anyway, why? maybe we'll just make our own group over here. And, you know, because, uh, you know, F3 is, is men only, so sure. uh, I think it kind of evolved out of that. But I'm not really uh, – I guess I'm kind of embarrassed to say I'm not really sure uh, exactly what are all the things that they do uh, over there. No, it's fair. But you, I mean, you still have an outlet for them, which I think is, is the key point there. Oh, yeah. And we make a lot of reference and uh, referral over to them. You know, women write in and go, hey, we love what you're trying to do. You know, is there any, any way we could come and do it? And we're like, yeah, man, go, uh, go talk to the chicks. <laughs> because really, at the end of the day, uh, Aaron, one of the last things a man needs when he's in in that kind of a place, you know, working out and hot and sweaty and whatever, is a, is his neighbor's wife in spandex sure. uh, there with him. It's, it's probably not a lot of good that can come from something like that. Yep, completely agree. So we are uh, we're getting to the last couple of questions here. Um, mm-hmm. Where can my listeners go to to learn more about F three and the groups that are in their local areas. For sure. Uh, the best place to, to go would be our, our national website, uh, which is f3nation.com. Um, and uh, you'll, if you go on there, you'll see there's a couple sections. So when one says I'm in F3, one says I'm new uh, or something like that. There's a, I think there's a tab that says locations. Um, and so you'd want to, you know, check that out. And uh, there's a map there, a big national map that shows, you know, all the places that, that we're in. Um, I would say that, you know, within a, uh, a reasonable <laughs> confidence interval, <laughs> right. Uh, it's, it's pretty accurate. Um, it's pretty accurate. So, you know, there might be some new ones that haven't made it onto the map yet. There might be some old ones that, uh, haven't made it onto the map ever, you know, or, uh, you know, tough to say, but, uh, for the most part, you, you click on, uh, that, that locations tab and you can, you can go to our national map and, and find a, a workout near you. The cool part is there's no registration, there's no fee, there's no nothing. You just find the one that is close to you that you think you want to try out, works for you time-wise and all that kind of stuff, and show up. That's it. Yeah, you, I mean, so, we've uh, talked about the amount of growth that you guys have, which is which is a lot in just a few years. Yeah. And you, you're you even in Omaha, which is how I discovered you guys. So <laughs> yeah. that's saying a lot because, you know, we, we're kind of considered the flyover state. So if you gave Omaha some love, I, that's great. <laughs> No, we've got them in uh, in Colorado and Kansas and Missouri and um, I mean, you know, yes, a lot of a lot of what we, you know, like you say, what we would would be considered flyover country, right? Sure. Um, but that's the thing, you know, men are men wherever you go. Yep, that's very uh, we've true. Got some starting up in uh, Montana and and uh, you know, there's brand new ones in Utah. We've got a few on the on the uh, West Coast, um, down in Texas, Florida. In fact, there's even a a group that has been officially planted in uh, Chimbote, Peru. Um, and those guys work out down there. Wow. Um, there's sort of semi-official groups in uh, Dublin, Ireland, and um, London, and uh, a couple other international places where guys have, you know, been F3 guys. You know, they lived here in Charlotte or someplace where F3 was, and they worked out. And then they got, you know, transferred with their job or whatever to, you know, Germany or someplace. And they say, well, 
I guess we'll just start it here then. You know, uh, we, we've had groups in Nepal uh, for a while. We had groups in Uganda. Um, and some of them are still, you know, semi-functioning. Um, but that's one of the one of the great things and one of the tough things uh, about our model, um, because we are so loose and because there is no registration, because there is no, you know, set of uh, things where we say you have to do these things or you have to do those things or, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, it's a little loose. And so sometimes it's a little tough to, you know, be as good a support as we can possibly be to all the different groups that are out there. But, um, but we're trying. We're working on that. Yeah, man. Uh, it's it, it, Things are seem to be going well from, from everywhere I look. So, um, can, I'm going to try and not screw it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I will take the, the next opportunity since you're, since you're the president or you're the, uh, you're running the show here. Um, what are the long-term goals for F3? Uh, so that's a good question. So again, to be clear, like, dude, I built nothing, you know, I, I showed up to not be fat. And I bought into the ideas that, that Dave was sharing and my brain got unlocked and he and I, you know, became very good friends. And so we decided, you know, he, he kind of called me in and said, Hey, let's, let's work on this together. And, you know, I want you to take over this spot that I was kind of doing because he needs to, to move and do some other things um, at a different level for F3. Um, up to now, it's just sort of been this very, um, you know, it's loose and it's, it's fast and it's a little bit the wild west, you know, kind of thing, which has been part of the attraction, I think, uh, for a lot of guys. Um, we have recently restructured uh, sort of the corporate, if you will, governance of, uh, of F3. And um, we're putting on just a little bit of structure. It's been very, very unstructured up to this point. But we'll put just a little bit of structure around it um, so that uh, we, can, we can grow in a more significant and more meaningful way. Um, so we can do things, you know, we've got a, a foundation that's a nonprofit that's part of the, uh, you know, the, the greater organization that now we can solicit donations um, and uh, make those tax deductible. Uh, we can raise money uh, in a significant, meaningful way. And why would we do that? Um, as much as I would love to think, oh, it's to, you know, <laughs> so a bunch of us guys leading can get paid a bunch of money or something, right? No, nah, that's not really how it works. And, and truthfully, it's, I feel like it would ruin it if I ever got uh, paid for this. But, um, but uh, we do that because expansion is real. You know, it costs money to go do the things that we want to do. It costs money to have impact in the community. It costs money to, to do that. And so we want to be able to have a... Um, you know, uh, a mechanism for that. So one of the long-term goals is continued integration uh, to be able to raise uh, funds and capital so that we can go and, and work on larger national type projects um, as a, a collective group. Um, some of the other longer term goals for F3, uh, we estimate that we're somewhere in the, you know, 30 to 35,000 uh, membership range uh, at this point. Um, my goal personally uh, is to build that in a way um, through, uh, you know, use of technology and other things, um, to, uh, to be able to help guys learn how to do this in, uh, in ways that we haven't been able to before. And so that we can triple, uh, within the next two years, my goal is to try and hit a hundred thousand, uh, by the end of, uh, 2022. Um, because I think there's that much good that needs to be done. Um, and so, a lot of a lot of growth uh, initiatives, a lot of things to do to try and figure out how do we serve the men that have already come and affiliated at some point or other. You know, we see a fair amount of guys come and they work out a couple times and they disappear for a while and they may come back and they may, you know, disappear again for a while. So, you know, we want to just make sure that we're working hard to to provide what it is that uh, that men need um, in terms of community, in terms of opportunity to lead, and in terms of uh, you know resources to help them in their personal lives because really. Uh, it's wonderful to work out, and that's great. But if it's not trickling backward uh, into your families um, and uh, and then into your communities after that, then there really wasn't any point to any of this anyway. Sure. So yeah, um, that's that's sort of the long term thinking that we're we're trying to have at this point. I have no doubt that you will you'll get there and far surpass that. Well, I appreciate that. I, <laughs> I often have doubts, and so <laughs> so I'll borrow yours for a while. Well, you're human. I mean, we all have doubts. It's mm -hmm. it's the admission of. Yeah. of that and the, and still going forward we're with trying. it that matters. Well, we, we're getting down to the last two defining questions and I, and I always try sure. to get creative with these. I, I love these two, but before we do, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you, Frank, for what you're doing uh, as a president of F3 and what the organization stands for, what it's doing for men. 
Um, I, I just think it's, you know, it's a testament to who you are as, as a person and, and the community that you're building yeah. and leading. So uh, I just want to take a moment yeah. to acknowledge you for, for that and your time today. I certainly appreciate that. Uh, but, you know, again, I'm not doing very much. The guys on the ground are the ones, the ones doing it. The men that are on lock are the ones doing it. We're just standing up there and going, hey, that's a pretty good idea. Why don't we steal that? <laughs> why, don't, why don't we claim? We'll, we'll go ahead and claim that we came up with that one. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, you, you're, guys, you're humble. Doing you're humble. It's all good. Um, what is your definition of a great man? Mm. That's a, that's a good question. Um, you know, uh, I'll, as I mentioned, I like to just steal things from guys that are smarter than me. And so I'll, I'll steal from, uh, my, my very good friend and, and mentor Dave Redding and say, you know, uh, a good man is a man, uh, well, I'll say a, a leader, if you will, is a man who is followed when he's in the room with you, right? A, a good leader is one that's followed when he leaves the room. But a great leader would be one that is followed long after he's dead. Uh, so I think a, the definition of a great man is a man who found purpose, who lived that purpose uh, as best he could, uh, and left a legacy for his family and the community behind him. I think that's, I think that's what, would, what would be a great man. So true. Last question. Okay. What do you want to be remembered for? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, hmm. That's a that's a tough question. Uh, and I'm going to answer it, and you're not going to necessarily like the answer, and you're going to think, that guy's full of crap. Um, yeah, and maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Uh, I want my kids to remember me, obviously, uh, my wife, you know, if, if, uh, I presume she'll outlive me. Um, I'm not a very good driver, so, you know, who knows? Um, <laughs> but, uh, I honestly, I, I don't know. And I, I do struggle cause I, I don't want to sound like I'm being glib or, or martyrish or anything else. Right. But, um, I don't know if I need to be remembered. Uh, I, I think that, the, the memory that needs to live on is uh, what I hope would happen uh, by some of the work that I'm trying to do and some of the things I'm trying to uh, inspire in the hearts of other men is that we we have a a reawakening of virtuous leadership in our in our world in our country and in our homes and in our communities um, and uh, I, I really believe in that all the way to my core um, I think that's what I'm here on earth to do is to help men uh, and women. Uh, presumably to, to learn to lead with virtue, to eliminate ego and to, um, to lift themselves to more of what they were created to be. And I don't know, I think six months ago, a year ago, certainly a year ago and then two years ago, I wouldn't have answered this the same way, but there have been some things that have changed in my life personally um, over the last six months to a year that, that really lead me to say uh, with sincerity, I if, if that changes, I don't know if it matters if anyone remembers that I helped in any way or not. Um, I, I really think it's just that important that this is the change that needs to happen in the world, um, independent of me. So, uh, I, you know, I, I would love it if people remembered that it was me, and that's wonderful, but it doesn't matter if they remember me. I'm dead. <laughs> you're, you're the vessel. You know, yeah, nothing, nothing comes of it after I'm gone. So if they remember or don't remember, it really doesn't affect me a whole lot. I'm gone. Um, but uh, my hope is truly that they would they would remember that that uh, that something started somewhere uh, to to get people to lead with more virtue and to um, to treat each other better. And so if, if we can do something like that, that'd be pretty cool, man. And, and that's what I'm hoping will happen. Well, that's an absolutely incredible, Frank. I really appreciate your time joining us today on the Man Core Podcast. Uh, my um, pleasure, brother. For real. Yeah, thank you so much for everything that you do for men. It's 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 so cool to see this. Yeah, you know, you say that, but, but but back at you, man. I mean, you're you're trying to do the same exact kinds of things. So it ain't something I'm doing. It's something we're all recognizing needs to be done. And so we're just trying to live the mission, brother. Awesome. Thanks for listening to Frank Schwartz here at the Mancore Podcast. <laughs>